you um, discussed the outlook for the world economy. Um, would you be willing to share that with our viewers, both the mid short-term and mid-term outlook? Absolutely. Uh, this comes just a few days following the end of the IMF's annual meetings in Washington, which was a gathering of the world's central bankers and finance ministers to exactly take stock of the outlook. In general, they find that the world economy, and I agree, has been improving on a, on a gradual basis. And looking into the next year and a half or so, it looks likely to strengthen a bit further. Growth could be considered to be moderate by historical standards, but it's positive enough and sustained enough that this has already become the third longest expansion in U.S. history. And we're seeing unemployment rates, not just in the U.S., but industrial economies falling back to pre-crisis lows. So that's the positive. And it's likely to continue. There are always risks, but no obvious risks of a sharp turn in the next, uh, next year or so. Now, looking beyond that, what is clear is there's been weakness in business investment. That means one of the reasons why uh, output gaps have been declining, despite only moderate growth, is that capacity has been growing at also an unusually slow pace, reflecting the weak investment. If that's not reversed, then you have to agree with the IMF that the medium-term risks are weighted to the downside for global growth. That wouldn't come as happy news for anyone. What do you believe is holding business growth back? Well, this is not entirely obvious because let's take the U.S. again, where it's been most clear cut. Short-term interest rates are low. Long-term interest rates are low and in real terms are extremely low. The U.S. in general over the last few years has received a significant benefit through the reduction in energy prices. Now, initially, that slowed down investment in the energy sector, but that over time should have boosted uh, investment elsewhere. So it's a bit of a mystery. It may be that there was a blow to a business confidence by the uh, growing out of the, the global recession that has inhibited uh, business investment. It seems that investors are themselves lacking confidence in vision about the future and as a result they want companies to give back their profits in terms of stock buybacks rather than new investment programs. It's possible that the regulatory environment has become more, uh, more complex and daunting. It's possible, for especially in the U.S. context, that with the prospect of business tax reform in the offing, perhaps businesses are holding back in the hopes that they will have a more favorable tax regime for their spending in the next, uh, the next few years. In other words, there is no single easy explanation, a bunch of potentially partial explanations, but a need, as I said earlier, unless there is a re-strengthening of business investment, it is have to be a risk that growth will slow in the medium term. There's a lot of discussion of the financial risk affecting financial institutions. What are, what are the non-financial and operational risks businesses need to prepare for? Well, it's been very clear that uh, institutions have had to grapple with the traditional financial risks of uh, market instability, credit risks, namely they've invested in the wrong market or the wrong company in the wrong market. This is not new. And of course, uh, institutions have to worry about maintaining enough capital to survive potential problems of this nature. What the last few years have showed is the importance of what are called, as you mentioned, non-financial and operational risks. Are they in the wrong business? Do they have business model risks that they are configured uh, inappropriately for the current environment? For example, Traditional banking, which was viewed with disdain, has in the current environment become uh, much more profitable in many ways, whereas the uh, investment banking and proprietary trading have become, and hedge funds for example, 
have become uh, much less satisfying over the last uh, few years. So these are the kind of uh, non-financial risks. As for operational, things like cybersecurity, maintaining the, the security and stability of systems, a systems crash or a hack is uh, potentially very damaging. Uh, these are the kind of things that were uh, never worried about uh, previously. Moreover, the firms have been subject to massive fines for uh, misbehavior on a scale that seemed amazing relative to the past. Uh, the institutions may have uh, transgressed in the ways they're being charged, but uh, the amount of fines involved is beyond anything that's been experienced before. These have to be taken into account. In other words, management of financial institutions find themselves paying attention to the kind of non-financial and operational risks that in the past would have been considered incidental.